Um, and so that's what I found anyways, like it's an emotional thing. It's a weakness that I'm working through and it's not mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Have you tried to just give it to Jesus? Um, I would say probably not. Really? Yeah, I don't think I have. Why? I, that's a great question now that I'm thinking about it. That's Dude, I'm so freaking smart. <laughs> Guys, if you don't subscribe to this channel, you're an idiot. Okay, but yeah, that's so weird. Yeah, that is weird. Like now that I really think about it, maybe that's why I'm still feeling this way. I know, because you're just trying to handle it on your yeah, own. I'm that's why I said, like, so if I just use the porn thing, and we might have to beep out the word porn because it might censor this video. Like, so f I'm going to get super vulnerable. This is going to be so weird. But let's say, because I don't want to say ages, because then it might be weird, right? But let's say from a young age, right? Young age, like, Pre middle school. <laughs> You're like, I'm not gonna say an age, but let me get down to exactly what age I would be. Yeah, let's say pre middle school, right? Okay. To have this weird thing where you watch stuff on TV or whatever, right? Yep. And then that grows into, you know, watching porn and all that stuff as a young man, yep. right? A young boy, really. Um, to 32. Yeah. And I tried to stop. Mm hmm. And I'm not saying like I was obsessive, but yeah. to do something for that long and then to go to church one day and it go away like that. And I didn't even ask for it to go away. I didn't say, God, please. I, I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to commit. I'm going to do this. And then I was like, okay. And then a few days went by. I was like, oh, that's weird. I didn't do it. Okay. Like a couple of weeks. I was like, that's really weird. And then months. And then I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. And that's never happened for, let's say, 20 plus years, literally, which is crazy. Think about 32 to, yeah. you know, so and then with my mom, like my mom, uh, as soon as I turned 19 years old, I moved out of my house. Mm -hmm. I remember the day I was at the house. Um, I think Noah, my son, threw the remote in a dog bowl. And then she's just started blowing up or something like that. Like I stepped in the dog bowl, Noah threw the remote in the dog bowl, something like that. She started yelling and I was like, I'm out. All right. I drive around. I go into an apartment complex. I get my, I got an apartment and moved out at 19, stayed away, stayed away, stayed away, turned 25, met Jessica, moved to California, didn't wow. talk or see my mom. The whole time I was in California. Wow. Yeah. Came back, got saved. And then pastor was talking about, um, coping mechanisms or strongholds. Mm -hmm. And he was like, some of your strongholds are, you know, distancing yourself or, mm -hmm. you know, getting angry or whatever the case may be. And I was like, dang, like that, my stronghold is like, oh, you hurt me. I'm staying away from you. Yeah. Like, and I'm going to make it awkward when we're around each other. So that way, you know, that I'm upset at you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I went to my mom's house after church. She didn't meet Noah or she didn't meet Levi and Camila until they were like five and four years old. Wow. Yeah. It sucks, huh? How's how's your relationship now? Well, yeah, let me finish the story. Okay. So went over there, right? And she didn't meet my wife. What? She never met my wife. She didn't meet my wife until we were married for like seven years. Oh my Six gosh. or seven years. So that day after church is when she met my wife. Wow. Yeah. So I went over there with Levi, Camila, and my wife. And, you know, we're all sitting there and I'm like, and and she has cancer now. Wow. So she's like, her stuff is removed. She's like, now looking the best. And then I'm just like, why? Hmm. Why did I hold on to that for that long? Mm -hmm. Literally makes no sense. So, yeah, I don't think I could have done those things without God's help for sure. I think what would have happened is I would have kept doing what I was doing with the porn thing. I would have kept doing what I was doing with the distance thing. 
because I did that to my mom and then I also did it to my dad. Mm. And I also did it to anyone. If anyone screwed me over on a deal, they're done. Mm -hmm. Literally. It takes one. I had one wholesaler out here say he was going to partner with me on a deal and didn't. I was like, okay, unfollow, bro. You show up to the meetups. I'm not even like, I'm not even pretending to be cool with you. I'm like, oh no, like we're not cool. Like that was my stronghold or whatever. Mm -hmm. But after I got a relationship with God, like that kind of stuff uh, got fixed. Yeah. But what was your question? I would say, how's your relationship now with your mom? A lot better. But like I said, it's not perfect. Cause my mom is like kind of cringe. Mm-hmm. Like my, my mom has like, just everyone's parents has these weird things where they're sure. like, my mom's always like, Oh, you know, the house is dirty. Uh, you know, I would have cleaned. I'm like, the house is always the same. Like <laughs> <laughs> your yeah. houses look the same since I was born. Like literally like, or like, oh, she's like a hoarder on some little stuff or just like random little crap, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I for sure forgive her. I for sure. Did you tell her? Uh, no. Do you think, do you think it would help? No, okay. I don't think so. Because she's a, she apologized a lot during the years where I was gone. And I was like, it's okay. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I think my actions and my willingness to relationship with her have a relationship with her is enough um because she tells me like hey i'm so happy you let noah come over or levi come over or we, i got mm-hmm. to go to your house like she never went to my house in california she never since i've left she's never been into a house that i own and even though i was gone all that time i was still financially supporting her mm-hmm. but i didn't talk to her mm-hmm. like i bought a house for her to live in I'll, I'll pay her i'll do whatever but i didn't talk to her yeah. Yeah. So. I think you should tell her. I'll tell her. Yeah. I think you should tell her like, Hey, I just want to let you know. I forgive you. Yeah. yeah. Like seriously, I think that mean a lot. And I think that obviously for men, like words mean a lot. And, yeah. and I think they words of affirmation, like just letting somebody know that mean a lot too. So honestly, if you don't feel comfortable with it, I would write her a letter. Yeah. And that's just, I'll as tell effective. her. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. But you have to tell her in like a real perspective of like, hey, yeah, yeah, I will. And then like, I forgive you for all yeah. of it. I think emotionally, like I am way more emotionally sound where before I wasn't. Yeah. So I could tell her that and cry and give her a hug and it yeah. wouldn't like, I'd be like, all right, like, great. It's, it's not about you. Yeah. It's yeah, about yeah. like, I think for her at this point, yeah. Now, Cause like, that's a long time too. And like, I can't even imagine, Yeah. you know, yeah. what she's gotta be going through. So what, if you were coaching yourself, mm-hmm. what would you tell yourself you need to do with your mom? Because I feel like your mom is what's, messing up in your relationships because some of the stuff you said about your mom is Mm -hmm. stuff you've said about your previous relationships Mm -hmm. almost verbatim it was funny too that's why i kind of smiled when you were saying it i was like you literally said that exact same thing about like not trusting her and all that stuff well it's interesting though too because that's exactly what i have to differentiate is like okay what is my trauma and what is the other person and so like in my past relationship and my just most recent one um, yes, that is the same problem that I had with my mom. And that's what I have to differentiate. Okay. Is that because I got so close to her because I got so intimate that I got scared and I was trying to pull away or is it because she's not trustworthy. And how do you differentiate that? If no matter what, whether the person is trustworthy or whether they're not, I'm going to pull away. And so that's something that I had to work through. And I feel like I made the right decision based on how she's reacting now, but then the relationship before that. I felt a safety and trust that she was not going to hurt me, but I didn't get vulnerable either, which is interesting. So I did have a trust for her of like, Hey, you're not going to hurt me. Like you're not going to do anything vindictive. Like I do trust you to be authentic and ish. So yeah, maybe it is. I don't know how I would fix it with my mom per se though. Cause like if, it's a feeling of whether they're being real and authentic with you or not. It does feel as though, how could I, yeah, I don't, that's a good question. I don't know what I would do to, can you just trust her and just say she is being genuine on what she's trying to do? So yes, I could, if I believed it, but if like, based on, (laughs) I can't just lie to myself, but oh yeah, I believe you and I trust you and I'm going to trust you. But when I can like read somebody and I can tell, how they feel I mean, I can't tell how everybody feels. I want to be very clear about that. It's not like I can just tell how you feel, but 
you can also tell when somebody's saying something that's not real. Like you just can't. Like so when somebody's just straight up lying, they're like, I'm so happy right now. You're like, okay, why do you look miserable? You know, and like they, yeah. they act like they're all good, even though you know they're putting on a front. You can tell that. And so that's what I mean is like it's it's gonna it's a difficult thing. What I would say that I am kind of doing differently now that I guess the advice I would be is like I just turned 30. <laughs> and so like to me that kind of like feels old. So I'm like, okay, I'm 30 years old now, dude. Like yeah. I keep saying, oh, in the future, I'll spend more time with my mom. In the future, I'm going to do this stuff. No, I, I just, so I just drove down to Kentucky two weeks ago because my mom and sisters live down in Kentucky. I'm like, I don't care. I'm driving down there. So I drove three and a half hours down there one day and I came back the very next day, I drove th four hours back because the traffic was horrible. So for me before I'd be like, no, that's not worth, you know, seven hours of driving isn't worth 24 hours of time when I'm like, no, that's worth it to be with my mom and my sisters. Yeah. And then I also stayed with her. I stayed with my mom, even though like her house is like, she's got dogs and the bed's super uncomfortable. So I, I was like, I'm still going to stay with her anyway. Cause usually what I would do is go stay in a hotel. Cause I wanted to be clean. I wanted to be the certain way. Yeah. And now I have to be more okay with and not being exactly how I want in order to exactly. be in the relationship that I want. Exactly. So yeah. that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. You have to be okay with what it is, even though it's not exactly yeah, what it is. Exactly. So accepting her for, yeah. you probably don't believe her, but yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's exactly what it is. Still like, okay, this is how you're saying you're okay. Even though you look like shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like, that's yeah, great. It's being okay with that. And then, yeah, I think that, yeah, it has to be, it has to be with how I show up, not based on what I believe they're doing. And that's what I'm mm -hmm. figuring out is like, okay, how could I show up to where she, maybe she would feel more comfortable with being more vulnerable with me with actually sharing some stuff. Because I also think that when people get around me, they notice the high expectation that I have. And so they want to perform and they want to be better, be more of somebody. Like I kind of yeah. feel that around my family sometimes too, is like, they almost view me as this person that they want to be on their best behavior around me. And it feels yeah. weird instead of yeah. like, being the person that they can connect and be real yeah. and authentic with because they almost, maybe it's the way I speak or I don't know, yeah. but so, so it's funny because one of, so Brianna's boyfriend, um, and myself and some other guys are in a discipleship group, right? Yep. And then they talked about, um, are you the thermostat or the thermometer? Right. Mm. So you are definitely the thermostat mm -hmm. like to them. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like. Cause you're just like, you're, you're, you're successful. You're in shape. You got the Rolex, you're clean. You don't want to be dirty. You're like this, that you're like that. So they're like, Oh, like, you know, not to the extreme, but you get what I'm saying. They're yeah. like, all right, I gotta be this type of person. Cause Dakota's here. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have to maybe learn how to be the opposite of being like the thermometer where it's like, you know, I'm going to sleep on this mm -hmm. dirty house or, you know, on this uncomfortable bed or whatever you said. Yeah. And just being okay with that, where then they feel more comfortable with you. And then maybe you will get ease with that relationship. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to continue this on audio. Um, for everyone on YouTube, subscribe, share this. If you enjoyed this podcast, if you're still here after all this time, let us know in the comments. All right. We appreciate you guys. We love you. Peace.